Today we will study about Central Limit Theorem. Central Limit Theorem is also known as Lindbergh Levy form and uh, sometimes it is also called as CLT that is Central Limit Theorem. Okay, so that is the short form and the statement is that if x1, x2, etc, xn are independent and identically distributed random variable with expectation of xi is equal to mu1 and variance of xi is equal to sigma1 square then the sum that is Sn is equal to x1 plus x2 plus etc. Xn is distributed normally with the mean mu is equal to n mu1 and variance sigma square is equal to n sigma1 square. So this is the theorem, uh, I mean this is the uh, statement of the theorem. We will move on to the proof. I know that this is a very big theorem but uh, see what we do is we uh, take uh, the information from this and then we will prove that this statement is correct. Okay, let's uh, start the proof. Let x1, x2, etc, xn be n independent random variable. Okay, then mp xi minus mu1 be the mgf of the random variable xi minus mu so here mu1 okay so here we have to consider the random variable xi minus mu1 so usually we consider random variables like what x y and z but here now we have to consider the random variable xi minus mu1 now let us find out the expectation of xi minus mu1 okay now what is the expectation of xi minus mu1 expectation of xi minus expectation of mu1 which is equal to what is expectation of xi we know that it's mu1 minus we know new expectation of mu1 is what mu1 itself then that is equal to zero so expectation of xi minus mu1 or the expectation of this particular random variable is zero now let's find out the variance of this random variable which is equal to variance of xi Now let us find out expectation of xi minus mu1 the whole square which is equal to variance of xi which is equal to what is variance of xi sigma 1 square right now let us consider this term that is mp xi minus mu1 which is equal to i hope all of you know that when you studied the mgf the properties of mgf uh, you might have studied that you can expand this uh, MGF or MPX as 1 plus T by 1 factorial into expectation of Xi minus mu1. You might have studied that 1 plus T by 1 factorial into expectation of X. But in this case, your random variable is Xi minus mu1. If you have forgotten this um, if you don't remember this expansion, please go back to your uh, MGF the, uh, in the first module and then you uh, you know that something like this you have studied over there. Okay, plus T, T square by 2 factorial into expectation of Xi minus mu1 the whole square plus etc. Okay, which is equal to 1 plus what about this term? This is 0. So uh, this, as this term is 0, you don't have the second term. Instead, 1 plus t square by 2 factorial. What is expectation of um, what is expectation of xi minus mu1? The whole square, it is sigma 1 square. So you just write that plus etc. Okay, so this is the first part of our story. 
which so here you have to consider empty z now this z random variable is sn minus m u1 divided by root n sigma 1 square and now from the statement we know that sn is equal to what x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xz okay now what i'm going to do is instead of z i'm going to substitute this value over here sn minus m u1 divided by root of n sigma 1 square now which is equal to uh, m sin, uh, instead of sn you can write m x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn minus n u1 divided by root of n sigma 1 square t that is instead of sn here i have given what is sn instead of that you can write that like this now in the next step what i'm going to do is i'm going to split this term now when i split this term see how i have split it m t root by root of n sigma 1 square and then i have given your random variable that is instead of m t x what i have written is i have written it as m t by root n sigma 1 square x1 minus mu1 so this i have written uh, like this using one of your uh, one of the properties of mgf multiplied by m x2 the next term x2 minus mu1 now you have n mu ones over there okay so x2 minus mu1 t root n sigma 1 square and so on till the end term okay now i'm going to club all these expanded terms and i'm going to write it as what m t by root n sigma 1 square instead of x1 x2 etc x, um, xn i'm going to write it as xi minus mu1 now uh, how, how did i write this because xi's are independent okay next what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a small expansion over here okay now let's see that uh, sorry, this will be whole raised to m. So, yeah, this is how you should write. Okay, now we will do a small expansion again. Now, what we do is we, we know that empty z is equal to what? Empty by root n sigma 1 square xi minus mu 1 the whole raised to n, which is equal to now I'm going to uh, expand this and what is the expansion? 1 plus t by on factorial root n sigma 1 square the expansion that we have did earlier we are going to apply that over here expectation of xi minus mu 1 plus t square by 2 factorial n sigma 1 expectation of xi minus mu 1 plus etc which is equal to now this term gets cancelled i hope you know why it got cancelled which is equal to 1 plus t square by 2 factorial n you know here also uh, instead of expectation of xi minus See, this is um, actually expectation of xi minus mu1 square. Now, what is this? This is sigma1 square, right? So, sorry, sigma1. Now, this and this get cancelled. Then, sorry, this is sigma1 square, yeah. Now, this, you get it as sigma1 square. So, here, instead of this, sigma1 square appears and this and this get cancelled. You get t square divided by 2 factorial n plus all the other terms will be 1 by order of n raised to 3 by 2 the whole raised to n right now i'm going to take log on both sides that is log mtz is which will be equal to what n log 1 plus t square by 2 factorial n plus 1 by order of n raised to 3 by 2 the whole raised to n so um, when i apply log actually there was an n over here so since I applied the log, I wrote this n, uh, I took that n here, the power is written over here. Okay, I hope you know the uh, what properties of logarithm. So applying that, I got this. Then what I did is, uh, here um, I applied 1 plus x. So log 1 plus x, all the other terms I considered it as x. And that is what is applied in the next step. So n into uh, I'm going to apply 1 plus x so x plus 1 by 2 x square plus etc. Now that is equal to here we have some common term that is t square by 2n. Uh, I'm going to take that outside from all the terms so that here my n and n get cancelled. Finally I get what t square by 2 plus all the other terms are 1 by order of n raised to 1 by 2. And 
as n tends to infinity here when n tends to infinity what happens this term this term becomes zero the second term becomes zero and the remaining is what t square by 2 now we have log mpz is equal to t square by 2 now what i'm going to do is i have to find out what is mtz so mtz is equal to e raised to t square by 2 now this mtz e raised to t square by 2 uh, you know this is very much familiar what is it yeah it is nothing but the uh, MGF of a standard normal distribution. Now, uh, MGF of a standard normal distribution means, what does that mean? Yeah, it means that here Z follows N01 or you can note it down or Z is equal to, what was Z? Z is equal to SN minus N mu1 divided by root N sigma1 square follows a normal distribution, standard normal distribution in other words, you can say that the asymptotic distribution of Sn, I have written over here, the asymptotic uh, distribution of Sn is what follows a normal distribution with mean n mu 1 and variance root n sigma 1 square. Now you can take down some assumptions of a um, what assumptions of your uh, central limit theorem so please take down the assumptions of a central limit theorem so I have written it I hope you have understood central limit theorem thank you